Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm, I'm very happy to have you here with me, because we have learned about both the Elysium, last episode, and the disco. The disco that happened in our expression as well. When I say our expression, I mean the expression. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music in an open air what do we somewhere in Ravachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit, and then he made the expression. So I adopted it. Why? We're looking at a mirror right now. Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did? Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. It's a sweet grimace. It's good. It's a good grimace. I, I, I really didn't... The first time we saw the expression, I really didn't get the, the correct impression of what it was supposed to be. In hindsight, it works uh, a little bit better uh, when we were trying to put on the charms on, on the lady next door. Um, I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it, like... Mm, wouldn't that be for... I assume that's, that's what that means, because otherwise it's really weird. That it is like a click, click. What are you a chicken or something? Um, but I'm so yeah. I, wouldn't that be for for uh, winking? The click is used to spur on a horse. Uh, it is I, no, actually, I think horses are more for <coughs> stuff like that, which is like kissing. I mean, it's not quite like it. It, there's many types of kissing. Um, it also features heavily in Guillaume's de Lemillon's. Regional mega hit. Don't worry, you pretty little head. Oh no, it's titles with parentheses. It's okay. I'm okay with titles with parentheses. Uh, they're more common in genres that I am not familiar with. I don't like the titles where it has feet dot. I don't like that. There's songs literally with that title, and I I don't like it. And it's I I know you can have a song and then feet, which means featuring. I don't know why they don't write it completely. It's computers. You can write anything. Um, but anyway, the point is I ramble and I don't like things, and uh, I talk about them. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to them. Oh, that's the stuff. That is the stuff with the finger finger pistols. It's that's good. If I had a smile like that, I'd do that. Because unlike Guillaume Lemion. You are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. Okay, how long ago was the new? Which is... It said before it was the new something. Uh, the new style. Okay, for some reason it's just called the new. Which might be a hint at uh, different ways of abbreviation across languages. Um, I can only tell you about... Well, I can tell you about other types of... Or other languages other than Portuguese and English... But uh, I, I do know for a fact that uh, that in Portuguese, for example, we abbreviate things incorrectly. Like, for example, Facebook. You wouldn't put things in the face, would you? Well, in Portuguese you do, because we don't know the, what Facebook means. And uh, so we instead of abbreviating it like the book, which is weird, but I suppose it might work in English. If you abbrevi abbreviate Facebook, you would, you would say the book or book. Like Instagram becomes the gram, not the Insta, which it does in Portuguese. It becomes the Insta. It's just, don't, don't ask. It's infuriating. <sighs> anyway, it's it's better than... I've, I've heard worse, actually. I've heard worse. So if you're Portuguese and you say face and Insta, all the power to you. It's fine. I say if you're Portuguese. If you speak Portuguese anyway, uh, because many countries do. Many nationalities. Um, anyway, the, 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 there is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression looking good on you or anyone. Two decades, if the calendar is to be trusted. Humanity has run around in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. I, ha I take... I take... I take issue with that. This is not the express. This is just a dazzling smile. It is an okay smile. It's it's the smile. It's just a normal smile. I mean, with the finger pistols and the sound, it, it might be a little bit different. But you know, anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I become a cop? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, rem uh, episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. Yeah, this is something that we... Excuse the hiccup. That we could have seen yesterday. Uh, and by yesterday, I mean in the very first episode of the game. Uh, and I'm pretty glad I didn't, because the Let's Play is 
you know, it's just a, it's a let's play for people who want to see the game being played with a different thing for, for from either other let's plays or from their own playthrough. You might be watching this and you might have played the game yourself. And I know for a fact some of you have or are watching other let's plays. Uh, uh, does this have anything to do with ostentatious orchestrations? Not really. Oh, that's oh oh. We have learned about this. This is a band, isn't it? Oh, this is probably this probably needs. Forget about ostentatious orchestrations. Oh, interesting. I forgot about specifically that. It might have been the the music that we were singing. They're more like a disco rock band, anyway. The oh, oh must have just stirred your memory. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. That's it then. It doesn't have to be. Oh, that's a new thought. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Mm, mm, know the origin. It's a little bit be of a better check over there to attempt to stop the expression from happening. Uh, I might be able to get my electrochemistry up a little bit. How is it only two? What do I have as a minus? You also have a new thought, so White Morning over here is going to have to wait a little bit. Guillaume Lemillon, that, um, that adds, uh, or minus one to logic, because my head is in the clouds. But it is a pretty fast research, so that's kind of good. Uh, and then, whatever happened, yeah, I might do that. We'll see. I don't know. Why would I want that? Maybe I don't want that. That's, yeah, maybe I don't want that. Let's see if I can, oh, no, that's not the button. Yeah, let's let the mirror be for now. Let's see. Find money for rent and pay Gart. Yeah, I have money for rent. It's it's fine. Uh, what I can do, though, is electrochemistry pants. Let's see if I can bring that up by one. Yeah, our electrochemistry is one. Yeah, let's put on our pants and our gloves. And I guess that's that, really. It might be a bit of a better check. It's still impossible. <laughs> I mean, it's always going to be impossible. That that number or that name there is not going to change. Uh, but my... How is it three? Electrochemistry three. That is weird, isn't it? It should be more. Well, maybe there's a maximum. Do my pens... Do both my pens add electrochemistry? Oh, I want the yellow pants then. They look better. And I don't need savoir faire. I'm bad. I don't know how to do anything, which is what savoir faire means. Of course, not in this context. Um, I'm just gonna go around with the uh, with a flashlight on. I'm just gonna call it a lantern. It's not what it is. In in British English, it would be the torch, rather, rather than a flashlight. Man, this thing is bright out here. Oh. A gust of briny wind washes over you. And we have the Ravachol song. I wonder what instrument that is. Yeah, it's probably just a, the keyboard. Just doing some some mad uh, effect and whatnot. Oh, yeah, we have songs. Or an, uh, another song in here. Kim must be downstairs. I try to handle... This door can only be opened with a key from the or from the inside. Nothing is gonna happen. That's uh, that's interesting. Hmm. She. She took my pistol. Oh. The union is out. That's their. Uh, oh, and Kim wants to talk. That's their uniforms. Kim is over there. Hey, Kim. What's up? Oh, good morning, he says. Yes, how's it going? Morning. He gives you a quick nod. Looks like we can get to work at once. The union muscle turned up. He points to the mess hall doors. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. What do you mean, rowdy? I mean, ungovernable. Ma Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCM being here. They prefer to be policed by the union, these men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast? He asks. There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for said policing. I think it's them. Are these the men Gart told us about yesterday? 
I completely forgot, he looks at his notes. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it, loud and nasty, just like the manager said. He crosses something out, he does, uh, Kim does. One loose thread less to worry about, and one big problem to replace it. Fewer to worry about, uh, rather than less. There's so many of them, though. Maybe we should call in reinforcements? Nah, I'm, a, I'm good. Why do we need to talk to them, though? Everything points to the dock workers as union. The tracks in the mud, the circumstances in Martinez, my preliminary information, which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them, and it won't be easy. Yeah, let's roll. One more thing before we go. He glances at the booth again. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own terms, says our reaction speed. Uh, but aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? Oh, yeah, I am. It asks our logic. And Kim says, They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Thank you very much. Uh, and we have a new map. Which is just things. It is really weird that it's called map. <laughs> Acquire a copy of city map. Oh, that's gonna be great. So it is not weird. Hey, Gart. Can I help you? He arches an eyebrow. Uh, yeah, about my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real. Uh, yeah. 20 real for the night. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Our empathy says, take it easy on him. Deep down, he really hates being the guy who has to remind you. I... So, if you say so, empathy. If you say so. He didn't... Honestly, he didn't come across as a, a really brusque person or anything. It's just... I don't know. He He's, he's okay. He's okay. He's just... Whatever. He, I suppose he's just... He doesn't like working here. He just wants somebody else to do the work for him. Um, by the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of question, he says. You wait and see, cafeteria manage manager, says our volition. Absolutely in question, says our inline empire. First we f find a sad banger, and then we sing this place to shit. Okay. Uh, I suppose that's fair enough. I suppose that's fair enough. He probably heard my... Um, he probably heard my singing already. Uh, anyway, let's talk to... I, fr I don't think I know her name. Just a moment. Lena. Lena is her name. The old woman turns back to the cafeteria manager. She's agitated, says our composure, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. And there's no public phones nearby. The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, Mum. Cafeteria manager appears genuinely apologetic. It's fine. I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. She turns back to you with a weary smile and says that last sentence. Uh, good day, ma'am. Everything all right? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead too. She sighs. Wait, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. She frowns. Why would he be vague about the phone problems? This is something to look into later. Ask Gart, maybe. Yeah, um, why did you need to use the phone anyway? To let the young woman who is house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and Gary were supposed to be back on Monday night, but they're still missing and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Gary... Huh, okay, I'll bite. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. She glances out the window towards the bay. So your husband is some kind of scientist? Oh yes, she says with a pinch of pride. A zoologist. A cryptozoologist, to be more precise. That's not... 
a crypt. I I. Hmm. <laughs> She has pride in the fa mm, well. I get mm, okay. Um, so note that she has pride uh, or a hint anyway uh, of pride in him being a cryptozoologist. A cryptozoologist is not actually a zoologist. I know that's I know that's confusing. Well, in the strictest sense of the word, it is. A zoologist is a scientist. A cryptozoologist is a pseudoscientist. Or actually, well, technically, you would be able. You you could approach cryptozoology. From a scientific perspective, you wouldn't be a zoologist. You would be probably a, an historian, maybe. Yeah, probably closer closer to uh, history than anything else. Uh, cryptozoologist, as you probably know, is just somebody who studies uh, mythical creatures. A zoology is a, a, somebody who studies creatures, and you say you you see the the distinction there. <laughs> so yeah, a cryptozoologist tends to actually know a lot about history and writings and 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 stuff like that and. Uh, is closer to sociology, or, or I suppose sociology is a thing. Uh, of course, there's cooks who actually convince themselves that the boars that they find out out in the wilderness are not boars, or something like that, uh, which is fine, I suppose. You know, there's there's always there's always discoveries. There's a lot of new species that are found every day. They're not crypto species, though. They're actual living organisms that we didn't know about and need to catalog. All, all day, every day. And they're dying a lot as well, because we have a big-ass extinction uh, going on at, this, at the, the moment. So all the cataloging we could do, it's the best for understanding anyway. Uh, probably should also try to work on saving the extinction things. Anyway, what is cryptozoology? Asks my um, character who failed an encyclopedic knowledge, I would assume. Uh, where's our encyclopedic knowledge? Is it intellect? It is. Oh, only a three. I suppose that's okay. It's a pseudoscience, says Kim. It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. And the lieutenant sounds unimpressed. Yeah. That's one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. Are they? That really doesn't... It doesn't matter for if they're entitled or not. It, we're not discussing whether or not we're entitled. We're discussing what cryptozoology is. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but there's, they still affect her, says our composure. I suppose she would get uh, be used to it. Also, she would be affected by them, I suppose. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. <laughs> oh, yes, you did, Kim. I can see through your words. <laughs> it's not a hobby, dear, she says. It's a subfield of zoology. It really isn't. One specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Yeah, that's 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 not what it is. Paleozoology is uh, what you would uh, is specifically the subfield of zoology um, that studies you know extinct or old species. Actually, specifically extinct species. You wouldn't you wouldn't say that you're a paleozoologist if you study I don't know, what's an old like crocodiles. That's an old species. Um one that has not changed too much. Uh specifically here, uh it's important to note what pseudoscience is. I know I mentioned it offhand and uh Kim also mentioned it offhand. And some people don't really know what it is. And uh it's actually it's really simple, but it can, like, y if you look into what it is, uh, it's not the easiest thing to find a definition of what pseudoscience is. And, be and the reason is because it's not really a well-defined thing. A pseudoscience is, you know, it's not something that abides by the rules and be like, hmm, if you want your thing to be a pseudoscience, then you need to, you know, have this thing or have this thing or have that. No, it's just, it's as simple as something that tries to come off as scientific, but isn't. Uh, that's just simp that's just a as simple as it gets, and that's why it's a little bit tricky to find definitions online, at least, uh, of what pseudoscience is. And you'll see a lot of people treating specific th stuff uh, as pseudoscience, um, but you know, this is, it, 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 the, if you ask the question, is it really pseudoscience? All you really need is to answer the question: Does it try to come across as scientific? If it is, and the answer to the question is it actually scientific? If the if the answer is no then yes, it is pseudoscience. Um, and she's definitely trying to c make it come across as scientific because zoology is a science. Well, y it is. That's, you know, 
N- not that you need. You can you can be a zoologist that has a bad scientific method, so it it can be pseudoscience as well. You can have you can apply pseudoscience to science as well. It's just not, you know, pseudoscience is just you know bad science. It's not even it's just extremely bad science because you can have bad science, uh, but extremely bad science is just something that's just really rubbish, and tries to come across as science. Searching for such species, she, she says, called cryptids. Oh yeah, I know is difficult and often thankless, and frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. I... I suppose that's one interpretation. I suppose she also might be a... She might also have studied them, so... Yeah, so we have a medium check on our suggestion here. Maybe you could convince her to tell you about these cool, some cool cryptids. Uh, we probably don't have time for that. Hmm, let's see. What is this expedition your husband was on? I'm gonna ask. Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. Pseudo, pseudo-scientist. He is his assistant. Or, uh, sorry, he and his assistant, Gary, are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a, f- a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. She says, she sighs. What could be keeping them? The water lock. That was broken. Could it be it? Uh. That is weird if it was them. Uh, they might have had an accident, though. Wait, who's this Gary person? Do you trust him? She smiles. Oh, sweetie, it's nothing like that. Gary's as low. I don't. I didn't say. Is this supposed to me being implying that this Gary person is having an affair, or they ran away together or something? Is that what it is? I don't know what her smiles is meant to imply. Gary's as loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life any day. Yes, yeah, maybe it isn't what she is implying. The water lock to the other side of the coast is broken. I'm gonna say they're probably just stuck over there. Oh, okay, so yeah, it was broken. Well, it was broken because somebody drove off a ramp. Hmm. I, anyway. Oh my, what happened to the water lock? Uh, well, I really don't know. Well, whatever the cause, I'm thankful, she turns to Kim. To both of you, you've spared me another sleepless night. You're welcome, ma'am. She turns back to you. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoology... Sorry. Cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect, uh, says our Inland Empire. And she says, And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired, and it's cold out there. Uh, sure, if I see him, I'll let him know you're you're here. When or if I get there. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. Uh... Maybe you could convince... Oh, it's interesting. She's less worried about her husband. Maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids. I ask of myself. I, suge- I ask my suggestion. And our suggestion says, there's really no point in manipulating anyone. She's She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go and ask. Hey, Lena, I'd like to hear about some of the cryptids you've studied. Could you just tell me about a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company, too. The lieutenant throws you one of his looks. One cryptid, not a couple. One. This one turned into some kind of cryptid extravaganza, he says. <laughs> cryptid extravaganza, I like some of that. Okay, Kim, let just one little cryptid, promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. He's always in his waiting posture. Whoa, tough choice there. Oh, no, wait, that's my encyclope- encyclopedia. So I can ask... Actually, I should probably ask about the... Mm, I can't. Ask about specifically the cryptid that they were looking for. Uh, let's... I mean, if it's an insect, I suppose it's going to be tiny. So what's the tiniest cryptid? Cryobacter... Actually, that would be Latin. Cryo... No, Latin with a na- uh, with a Y? I suppose it could. It's it's not actually Latin. Uh, scientific names are not Latin. 
they're inspired by Latin, but they don't they're like they they don't follow the rules of Latin. You can name them whatever. Um, and I'm pretty sure you can name them not a scientific not not a Latin name. I think there's some some species that uh, that don't have Latin names. Um, yeah, because if you find a species, you're you you are you're allowed to name it, and it just like gets recognized by the scientific community as as a thing that you that that you you can come up with it. Uh, I, th I I assume within reasonable, you know, d n limitations of of just practicality and, and decency, I suppose. Um, it's a Cryobacter catlensis. She answers immediately. I and I repeat the word. Yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Katla on the Boreal Plateau by a renowned geologist, Kathleen Mijanu, some 70 years ago. And what's so special about it? The bacterial colony Mijanu found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate, certainly from before recorded history. Which is what history is, by the way. The game earlier said written history. Yeah, there's no such thing as unwritten history. That's prehistory. That's or, I guess, proto history. But that it's prehistory. History is literally just what is written. Mijano or Mijanu disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. Wait, so she injected herself with it? Oh yes, the bacteria had survived in, in ice since times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. I... It, it, it really is hard to see. It's actually a little hard to see, says Kim. Yeah, he looks at her sp skeptically. But to go on... Uh... I don't understand. Why would you prolong... Wait. Uh, this this is not meant for me to skip lines. I'm gonna just go with them. You mean there's an immortal geologist wandering around the world? I'm jumping to conclusions here. I'm uh, this is the not hard to see. Yes, and she's quite mad too. After she treated herself with a bacteria, she stopped aging, but also became increasingly eccentric and irascible. Or, I think that's how it's pronounced. So that even her oldest friends were forced to pull away. We can assume that she has been living somewhere in the wilderness for decades now, all alone except for the cryobacter catlenses coursing through her bloodstream. I... I suppose that's that. This is, has been educational. Sadly, we need to discuss something else. Of course, dear. Um, tell me more, more about this rare insect your husband is looking for. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating, she catches herself, but I shouldn't bore you with et entomological minutia. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. No, I want to hear about the insect. Well, she hesitates, it's a phasmid, technically, but... Oh yeah, here comes the interesting, says our Inland Empire. Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, it's one... A, it's one, this one is a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here in the Insuliandian, Insuliandian coast. She looks you in the eye and nods thoughtfully. Hence its name, the Insuliandian Phasmid. Perhaps you would, you'll end up co-discovering the Phasmid with us, officers? I knew it, the lieutenant sighs. We're going to be chasing made-up insects with cryptozoologists. It's not made up, officer, I can assure you. It's simply elusive, so much that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. Yeah, it's, that's... I, I really don't know, need to criticize why her attitude is not uh, scientific. I really don't. If you, if you, if you have questions about it, uh, leave them down in the comments. I'm not going to bother with it, because this is just all nonsense. Uh, what makes you think the phasmid is around here? Well, some teenagers making it out in the reeds saw one. They didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in the local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. So a newspaper clipping is all the evidence you have? Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but their de description matched the Insulindian phasmid perfectly, and they didn't even know what they were looking at. 
Enthusiasm has wiped the worry from her face, our composure says. Her eyes sparkle behind her glasses. You seem really excited about this cryptid. I suppose I have something of a personal connection to the insulinian phasmid. All scientists have their little hobby horses. Which I... So is it dangerous? She chuckles to herself. Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? I... There's... Because it's... I mean... Is it valuable? Oh, I doubt it. No one gets into cryptozoologists for the money, sweetie. Yeah, no one gets into zoologists zoology for the money either. Does it have cool powers? Yes, it can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. Her face lights up at the thought of it. It's how it's stayed hidden all these years. Centuries, even. Set, you know how, when it started existing. Okay. Uh, what's so special about this stick bug, then? Oh, dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. The woman's face fla flushes with embarrassment. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you you would understand, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, that's all for now, ma'am. Oh, did I I not know I didn't notice that before. We have Monday tasks and we have Tuesday tasks. Um, Gart, I might want to talk to you. you. Yeah. Um. I saw a sign that said I couldn't go into the kitchen. Why can't I go into the kitchen? What are you? A cook now? That's none of your business. Uh, but there may be something pertinent to the investigation in the kitchen. He rolls his eyes. He wasn't pen fried. He was lynched. What could the kitchen possibly have to do with? He changes his mind. Fine, okay. The kitchen is closed until 1300 hours, because the cook is working. You can snoop around after that, if you must. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the phone, is, the phone line is dead? Yes, and the phone company is taking its sweet time sending someone to fix it. He shakes his head and adds, losers. That's pretty strange. It's not strange, it's inconvenient, he says. Is it true that there was foul play? I'm going to ask. He wrinkles his nose. Who told you that? Um, I would never disclose my sources. That wouldn't be. That would be dishonorable. Fine. Yeah. It looked like someone had messed with the wiring. It was shortly after the hanging, but I don't know if it's all at all related. Plenty of assholes around here, one who aren't murderers. If you do find out who cut the line, though, let me know so I can forward them the repair bill. You're. You're going to have to pay for it? You're going to have to pay for the line to be fixed? Hmm. Interesting. I don't have to pay when my line gets broken. And I leave in Portugal, which is not a dystopic, dystopic future or anything. The tomatoes are so thinly sliced you can see through them. Oh, the true talent of uh, also getting money. The true talent of, of a, a good knife wielder. Cutting tomatoes. And nothing here. Okay. I can go and check that out, but I don't think there's going to be anything for me. I can try to push the door, but the door does not budge. I don't think I will be able to do anything with it anyway. But uh, every time we do one of those checks, we find 10 cents, which is very good. 